Blessed is the mind too small for doubt. Today we're going to be building Warhammer 40k terrain. More specifically, we're going to be doing floating mountains. I guess you could call them buttes. They're basically the mountains that have the flat top. They're too small to be considered a mesa, but they are still pretty good for putting infantry and things on top on elevated terrain and still keeping some type of like naturalistic terrain element so they can both be played for 40k age of sigmar and even dungeons and dragons if you want to let's get to it let me give you a quick overview of how we're going to accomplish this the first thing we're going to do is layer multiple pieces of foam board to create a solid structure that we're then going to carve out into the shape of our mountain once the mountain shape is done we're going to attach different materials to create a rock design all over the foam structure and then finally, we're going to base it and paint the entire thing. So let's start off by understanding what type of foam boards we're going to be using for this project. There are two types of foam boards that I like to use. The first is pink extruded polystyrene and the second is white expanded polystyrene. Both of these can be found at your local hardware store if you check in the insulation section or aisle. Let's explain the pros and cons to using each type of foam. The white foam is great because it's a lot cheaper than the pink foam and we're going to be using a lot of this foam for this project. However, white foam is a mess to work with. If you aren't using a hot wire foam cutter, it's going to release these annoying little white foam balls all throughout your room and your mom and or wife is going to yell at you. I'm not saying your wife is your mom or that your mom is your wife. That's your business. Leave me out of it. What I'm saying is that if you don't have a hot wire foam cutter, it's going to make a mess. Pink foam, on the other hand, is a lot denser, so you don't have to worry about making a mess. And it's perfect for carving designs, and overall, it's just a better foam for terrain making. However, it is expensive, and for this project, it's best to use pink foam for the top layer that will be exposed to the miniatures, and then the white foam for the core of the terrain, which will end up being covered by other materials. With that brief explanation of the two types of foam boards, we can start creating the foam structure that we will carve into the mountain shape. What we want to do is have a mountain that has multiple levels where the miniatures can stand on. So we will be using this pink foam for those layers and then sandwiched in between those layers will be white foam. As you can see, I drew a square grid on the pink foam where I'm going to be cutting out the mountain shapes. However, you don't need this square grid. The reason that I drew it on there is because this is going to work both as a 40k piece of terrain and also a terrain for Dungeons and Dragons. And Dungeons and Dragons uses a grid system. But again, that's not necessary. All that you really need to do is focus on the outline that you see in red. These are the rough borders of the mountain shape. Since I want multiple levels, the bottom layers of the mountains have to be big enough to fit the top layer as you see here. They kind of have to stack like a set of stairs. I simply use a hot wire foam cutter to cut the various shapes that I drew on with my marker. Once the top pink foam layers are cut and they fit properly just like this, the next step is to trace out the top layer onto the white foam. I want three white layers underneath each pink foam. So once they are traced out, I cut each layer out and glue them one on top of the other. It should look like this. Once your shapes are dry, you glue the top of the mountain to the bottom and wait for it to dry. It should look like this. Now I want my mountain to appear as if it is hovering above the ground. In order to accomplish this aesthetic, I need to carve a slope down the mountain kind of in a reverse way. Think of them as stalactites, giant stalactites that are holding up the top layers where the miniatures are going to be standing. Unfortunately, this creates a balance issue because if I have miniatures on the top of the layer and the top layer is wider than the bottom layer, the entire thing is going to topple over. In order to combat this, I need to have some type of material that holds the entire structure in place. Think of it kind of like a tripod. It doesn't matter that the top is going to be heavier than the bottom because the tripod is going to hold the thing up just like a regular table. The material that I chose is PVC pipes that will go through the core of the structure creating the tripod effect. To do this, I drilled three holes through the entire foam where I will then glue the PVC pipe creating the structure support. 
Now that the structure is complete, I'm going to be using a hot wire foam cutter and I will carve the shape of the mountain so that the PVC pipes that I just installed act as legs for the floating mountain. Once the entire structure is sculpted to my liking, it's time to apply the rock shaped plaster castings all throughout the entire structure. These castings came from a rock mold I purchased at my local hobby store. You could also find these molds online. I'm going to put a link down in the description. Or you could use tree bark to give your structure a more rocky texture. I'm going to be using hot glue to attach these rock castings all throughout the mountain. And I don't have to worry about the gaps that I'm creating because we're going to cover that up in the next step. Once the rock castings are dry and secure, the next step is to fill in the gaps with sculpt mold. This is a mixture of paper mache and plaster. This was also purchased at my local hobby store, but again, I'm going to be putting a link down in the description below because you can just buy this on Amazon. Make sure to spray the entire structure down with a little bit of water to help the sculpt mold stick to the terrain. Before the water dries, the sculpt mold is applied. It's really easy to use sculpt mold. Simply just add water, mix it, and then you are ready to apply it to the structure. I like to use a popsicle stick because the sculpt mold does get kind of messy. So if you use your hands, you're just going to end up making a mess. Before the sculpt mold dries, we will wet our fingers and smooth out the hardened edges of the piece of terrain to make it look more like a mountain. Once we are comfortable with the texture of the mountain, we just allow it to dry. The next step is to prime the entire piece with a combination of Mod Podge and black paint. This is not only a primer, but it also strengthens the bond between the paper mache, the rock castings, and everything that's connected to the structure, securing everything in place. Now it's time to paint. Because we use Mod Podge, we can use spray paint. And I'm going to be using two shades of brown. First, I apply the dark brown spray paint followed by a lighter brown. This creates interesting shadows before we even add a wash. Once the spray paint has dried, we hit the entire piece with a wash. I like to create my own washes when it comes to terrain pieces. To do this, I mix black, brown, and dish soap with a little bit of water to create this very dark wash. I apply multiple coats of wash until I get the desired shade. As you can see, the finished product is a very complex color. It almost looks gray, but there's hints of purple and brown. You can see a big difference when we look at the flat top of the mountain. Next step is to take a big brush and apply a gray highlight. To do this, we're going to be using a technique called dry brushing where you get just enough paint on the paintbrush to paint the rigid edges of the mountain, but still leave that rich wash underneath. I apply multiple coats of this dry brush highlight, making sure to get lighter with every step. Once the color scheme is finished, it's time to flock the flat surface of the mountain. I use three different shades of green flock, and then I simply glue the flock down with Elmer's glue. At the very end, you see me pick out the edges of the square grid with a toothpick, but if you are a 40k player, you just completely can ignore this step. You could just leave the flock right on there. And this is the finished product. As you can see, I already have my orc boys that I painted last week. Check out the video uh, linked above if you guys want to check out how I quickly painted these cool bad moon orcs. Uh, this is a project that's going to require probably a weekend. It's not that easy. It requires a lot of uh, prep work and a lot of just work in between. 
Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed and if you guys use my tutorial to build your own buttes or mountains or whatever it is let me know hit me up uh, with pictures either on Instagram or Facebook I would love to see what I inspired to create now if you guys have suggestions for any other uh, terrain pieces also let me know in the comment section below uh, the next one is probably going to be some Skitari Forge World terrain uh, but again, if you guys have suggestions for any other topics uh, that you guys would like us to create both like a hobby lore video for, I'll gladly do it. Right now, I am looking at the Crusade um, portion of 9th edition, so I might be doing these uh, episodes connected to the Crusade. Uh, so basically just building an element, or just building an army based off of what you can use for a crusade, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, thanks so much for listening. Oh, and before I forget, let's announce the winner of the Indomitus box set. Uh, this was the giveaway going on last week to um, announce that we're going to be making videos like this, or I'm going to be making hobby videos like this. Uh, the winner for the Indomitus box set is this guy. If you are the winner, all you have to do is hit me up either on Instagram, Facebook, or email me at onemindsyndicate, the number one, at gmail.com. Uh, let me know your address, and I will ship the Indominus box set to you. Uh, congratulations for winning. More giveaways coming very soon. And again, I hope you guys have been enjoying these videos. If you have any suggestions, uh, comment down below. Thank our patrons on Patreon. If you guys are enjoying these videos and you want to see more, support us on Patreon. It's just a dollar a month, and with that dollar, I'm going to be using that money. Well, I have been using that money to buy the giveaway stuff. Uh, so thank our patrons. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will talk to you tomorrow. This was Gershwan with One of Mine Syndicate signing out. <laughs>